what's going on? I wanted to, well, show up and be a, a present coach for you today. We're talking about procrastination. So this whole week I'm dedicating coaching to the topic of helping you overcome procrastination. Hi, Kim, I love you. And here's the deal. I need, I have a couple of things and I did a whole podcast episode on this. You can of course get that for free anywhere you listen to podcasts or directly on my website at trishblackwell.com forward slash 285. I'll post that link in the comments above for you. But here's the deal. There are three things that are so important to me that you know about procrastination. First, you are not a procrastinator. You simply engage in procrastination. Hi, Megan. You simply engage in procrastination. So I think that there needs to be a disassociation, a separation of this, of this habit that is so detrimental and so stalling and so delaying that we have identified it as a personality trait, as part of who we are. And you guys, it is simply not who you are. You may identify as a procrastinator, but I need you to change that language to just saying, hey, I have a habit of procrastination, right? It is not who you are, it is simply something that you do. And that may seem small, but it's actually in the big scheme of things, very, very big and very, very important. So you are not a procrastinator, you simply have a bad habit of procrastination. Now let's break that down further. Why do you have a bad habit of bad procrastination? I think there's two reasons, and then these were the other two things I wanted to share with you. One is that um, I think sometimes we overthink the fear of what we think other people are gonna think of us, and we've built it up in our minds. We create, we take these little projects, they're little, they're little molehills, and we make mountains out of them by putting them off, putting them off, putting them off. Whether that is paying a bill, calling that doctor's office, uh, pressing enter on that Facebook ad that you're trying to do for your business, um, make an appointment to speak to your boss to ask for a raise, asking that girl or that guy out. Whatever it is, the more you put it off, the harder it becomes. Seriously, the bigger it becomes. And so then we think, well, it's just not easy right now, I'll wait till I'm ready. And we keep pushing it back and back. So we sort of convince ourselves to say, oh, that's too hard, I'm not ready to do something hard, without realizing that we're biting ourselves, we're shooting ourselves in the foot because we're creating something that's even gonna be harder for ourselves. So I think you need to do this. I think the, the way to be free of that, the way to stop using procrastinating procrastination, the habit of procrastination as an excuse, is to tell yourself, I can do hard things. I'm really good at doing hard things even when I don't feel like it. You know what, I, it, it, that comment, that statement, that mantra, that keeps me going. That makes me get up and say, I can do hard things. And just because I don't feel like doing something does not mean that it's not the right time to do something. Um, by the way, guys, I'm live and I got about 20 minutes here. So I'm, I'm gonna take questions. If you have a specific procrastination um, issue that you wanna work on, I'm here. Let's, let's dive in together. Yeah, so um, overcoming that of saying it's, I'm not ready, it's too hard, it's too hard, it's not too hard. You are ready, you are capable, and you've gotta just get it in your brain that you are not who you were yesterday. You are new today. You are not stuck in old habits. And you are somebody who is good at doing what they say they're gonna do. That for me is something that's really follows through and helps me push through on, on taking action when I don't feel like it, I've decided that I, Trish Blackwell, am somebody who does what they say they're going to do. Because for years, to myself, I wasn't. To other people, I was, but not, not to myself. And so I wanna encourage you, you are somebody who does what they say they're gonna do. And so tell yourself that, and then ground it in you, and stop making mountains out of molehills. I think the sooner you take action, the more obsessed you get when taking action, even when you don't feel like it, the more results you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see. And I get it's so so important to do one thing every day that scares you. And so rather than saying, ah, oh, like I just want to put it off because it just feels like too hard, I think sometimes we just need to call it what it is and say, I'm scared to do this. Why? And ask yourself, walk yourself through that conversation of why you're scared to do something. Are you scared to ask people to join your business? Are you scared to sell, I've got a fly flying around here. Are you scared to make that move that you've been thinking about? Are you scared to have that conversation? That means when you're scared to do it anyways, it's even more reason to step up, rise up, and do it. 
So I promised you three ways that have helped my clients really overcome procrastination. And that's really understanding that what I said first and foremost, that you're not a procrastinator. It's not who you are. It's a habit that you formed. It's a coping mechanism. It's an escape route. It's a, it's an excuse and a habit you've taught yourself. It's a behavior. It's not you. And that's so important that you know that. Number two, that you are capable of doing something every day that scares you. Face up, stand up, take ownership. I think the more we just push it off and go, oh, it's no big deal, the more it becomes a big deal. And the more, the more internally, we wouldn't tell anybody this, but internally, the more, more weak and, and frustrated we feel with ourselves. And then finally, the third, the third strategy that's helped a lot of my clients in overcoming procrastination is the, is the need to simplify and prioritize. You've gotta know what you want. If I could encourage you to do anything, take a sheet of paper out today and decide what it is that you want. Figure out what you want and go after that. Now make it your priority. Stop saying that you don't have time. The, 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 the statement that you don't have time is a lie that you've convinced yourself to convince yourself into the behavior that your procrastination doesn't matter. Your procrastination does matter and you will create time and you will have time and energy for something that matters to you. Now here's where it gets interesting. Sometimes we're afraid to really admit that what we're doing matters. We're afraid to say that I don't want to, I don't want to touch this in case I'm disappointed. Let's stop being afraid of the challenge, afraid of the disappointment, and let's expect there to be challenges, expect there to be struggle, because where the struggle is, that's where we get strength from. That's a good thing. It's good to fall down, because every time we fall down, we get the strength to get back up. And so I, I think that for myself and for my clients that I work with in this area, the simplification of just knowing what matters to you and why is going to help you stay on task. It's going to help you take action for when you don't feel like it. I know for me, I can I make my to-do list and sometimes I don't feel like it. And I can find a million things to do in my house to distract myself because I work from home, y'all. It's easy to get distracted. Or when I'm not working and just my kids are napping and I want to maximize that time, it's easy to find other things. But I have to go back and say, what's important now when what's important now what do i need to do to move this thing forward and rather than be overwhelmed with i don't know all the next steps like we can get so far ahead of ourselves we just need to say what's important now what's important now what's important now maybe you're thinking about changing your health and fitness what's important now isn't that you decide and you sign up at the gym it's that you call the gyms in your area and get the information and set up an appointment for a tour you take that next step because the reality is that sometimes we get we start, we engage in procrastination because we're overwhelmed. We don't know where to start. And then we want the perfect place to start. And here's the thing, guys, there's no secret to this. And thanks for the love. Thank you. Not sure who did that love, but thank you for the thumbs up. You don't have to figure out the perfect way to start. The perfect way to start is to just start. Staying focused, Deanna, thank you for that. Staying focused is tough. You know, I think, Deanna, that what's so important is to keep, I would write down three ways that, three things that matter the most to you that day. And just say, how do I stay focused on that? And I'll be transparent with you guys. Um, sometimes we procrastinate on, on our own self-care. And I woke up this morning, I'm fighting a cold, I'm not feeling so hot. And if, so when I'm, when I'm mentally, I'm physically not feeling well, I'm mentally um, more uh, vulnerable to, to old thinking, negative thoughts, comparison, self, self beratement, right? And I had to make that decision today. I do not choose anxiety. My priority today is to show up and live well, to love well, to, to see life as beautiful. And Megan, yeah, the same of, of staying focused. So for me, my focus point, and your focus point is going to vary depending on how you feel that day. My focus point is what do I need to do to move every little thing in my life forward just a smidgen? How do I, how do I show up for my husband today? How do I show up as a great mom today? How do I show up for myself today? And how do I show up for my clients, for my people? And I just say, if I've done that, then that's enough. And then I think, what's the next thing that I could just move forward a little bit? And I think staying focused, one of the keys, key ways that I stay focused is knowing that and believing that what I do has a compound effect, that the little bit I do over time becomes something big. Because if you don't, it's, it's easy to get distracted when you don't think that the little bit of focus that you have is going to make a difference. But I can tell you this, if you stay focused and you stay consistent and you follow through and do what you say you're gonna do, you will get results. The key to success is not that crazy. It's, it's if we were all to follow through on what we said we would do, 
we would all be successful at whatever it is we wanted. Now, why don't we follow through? Because we procrastinate. And so I think we procrastinate because we don't believe we're capable sometimes. I think there's that. So at the simplicity, I think when it goes back to my third thing, that strategy is simplifying and prioritizing, meaning this is my goal and this is why it matters to me. And you have to remind yourself every day, it matters and I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna push myself because it matters. Whether it's a financial goal, whether it's a physical goal, whether it's a business goal, and you say, I will show up because I know it matters. I may not see the results, not even I may not, usually 99% of the time, I will not see results right away, but I believe that they will happen. I think that's the key to staying focused. I will stay focused, I will keep showing up because I know that what I do matters and that there is gonna be a reward on my investment, if that makes sense, right? Or that like, I just have to focus on that one step. Stay in the present, take a step. Stay in the present, take a step. So those are my three ways. Again, you are not a procrastinator, so stop calling yourself one. You are someone who engages in behavior that's based in procrastination, and more than, often than not, that's just a learned behavior. It's a, it's a habit you've created, and we can create an exit strategy out of that habit. I go into that a lot on the podcast, which you can get, get in Apple, St um, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, um, or right on my website at trishblackwell.com forward slash 285. Please check it out, listen, subscribe, and write a review if it was at all helpful and share it with a friend. But then number two is that you can you need to remember that you can stand up to, to whatever that, that big mountain that you keep putting up. It's so funny, when we finally take action and do something, we're like, that was actually a lot easier than I thought. Like, so slow down, simplify it, and then, especially if you don't feel like doing something, you need to do something anyways. You need to take action anyways. And then third, the third strategy, again, just to remind you, was to simplify and prioritize. And that come, part of that breaks down is saying, this is why it matters, this is what matters, this is why it matters, and this is why I choose to believe that the little bit I'm putting in, the effort I'm putting in, the showing up, that there will, I will see the results from what I'm, put, what I'm doing. And that's how, for me, I stay focused. I stay focused by simplifying what I need to do, mm -hmm. simplifying my expectations, and then saying, I'm gonna show up no matter what. Like, I just know I will show up, right? So I will show up for my dreams in the same way I will show up for somebody else. Think about the people that you, you make a promise to, a friend, a family member, your, your child, and, and you show up for them because it's for them. Well, I want you to take that same concept and show up for you and your dream and your commitment or whatever it is that you, you, you keep getting put from today's to-do list to tomorrow's to-do list to the next day's to-do list. It, you're making it too big of a deal. It's a lot more simple than you're making out to be if you were to treat yourself with the same kindness and, and, and respect that you treat other people. So it comes back to an issue of self-care. Cool, Dan, I'm so glad that was, that was helpful. You guys, is there any way that I can, I've got about five minutes, is there any way that I can help be of service in helping you overcome any maybe bad procrastinating habits that are making you feel stuck? And if you've listened to the podcast already and you loved it, let me know, okay? Give you guys just another minute or so. I don't think I have any other questions coming in. Deanna, Megan, I appreciate y'all participating and I will continue to keep showing up as much as I can for you guys here. You guys, make sure you hit some likes, some love. Okay, well on that note, if no one has anything in particular I could help you with, I would love to, to help, let me know. I will come back and um, Melissa, you said I listened this morning, loved it, awesome. I'm super happy that it was helpful. That's, that makes me feel good, thank you. And um, you guys, please don't forget that this um, Saturday, Saturday the 30th, Sa Sunday is the 30th, this Sunday is the last day you can enroll in the College of Confidence for 2018. So I do hope that if you're ready to take these kinds of concepts and your dreams and act and the actions you wanna take and, and really equip them with more belief, that's where you need to be. We'd love to see you there, trishblackwell.com forward slash college. And in the meantime, take action. You are doing better than you think you are. Simplify and celebrate every little thing that you do. All right. 
Much love.